Welcome back. I am talking about uh, something that came up from an article from Microsoft that I've actually demonstrated a couple times on my channel. I'll put it in the comments down here below. But I'm going to be using Evil Gen X2 again by Kuba Gretzky. Uh, let's go ahead and kick over. So Microsoft says, hey, listen, from cookie theft to BEC, attackers are using an adversary in the middle phishing sites. And I talked about this on my show, The Game, on PAX 8 Cloud uh, YouTube channel. But essentially, the threat actor gains a position in the middle and harvests the OAuth token or the OID token and username and password but this bypasses mfa because once that token exists it persists and it persists for 90 days by default by microsoft uh, but you can change that setting and so i'm going to demonstrate harvesting the token uh, i'm going to demonstrate using basically evil genix 2 which was made by kuba gretzky but also modified by jan backer uh, who fixed the kind of parsing rules for the oidc tokens that were broken sometime last year or so um, great articles i'll link the, these below Below as well but I just want to show how easy it is for the threat actor to do this but also how you can put some session time limits and session sign in every times in place that might prevent this from by being used and I'll demonstrate that by harvesting a token with a one hour lifestyle time using it and then using it again an hour later and seeing it fail so uh, let's go ahead and kick over to the evil genix server I have set up and ready let's go to our Linux box with evil genix 2 and be ready to steal a token all right, we're now on the victims box. It's basically just a private browser that I'm running. And we're going to go ahead and type in the malicious link. If you notice, it's login.login.inkedin.live front slash a little GUID that protects the uh, server from a lot of scanners. We're going to type in our, and this is a lab account, so we're okay, our, our username and our password. And we're going to go ahead and do our two-factor authentication on our phone. And as you see, we start to see a session. We're going to say yes on keep me signed in. And if we notice, we now have an actual token session here. We're going to go ahead and harvest by typing in session six. And we're going to go ahead and get the token essentially um, and copy and paste that and get it over to our attacker box. Moving to my attacker box, we're going to copy that cookie or token that we had before. And we're going to use a tool in a fresh, you know, unsigned in Google Chrome browser. We're going to go to outlook.office.com. We're going to pull up the, you know, see that we're not signed in, and then we're going to pull up the cookie editor, uh, which is a plugin. We're going to import by just bringing in the JSON text that we pulled from that token or cookie, and we're going to import it. And you'll see it's, it highlights those auth persist and a couple other settings saying, hey, I now have a token that replaced this information. That token is used and allows me to sign in and be you. Now, the bad part is business email compromises come from here, information theft, gaining access and pivoting comes from here. In this case, I'm just going to send the threat actor as myself to myself a message saying, hey, I pwned you, <laughs> right? Um, but threat actors would really do bad things and not good things in this situation. Matt, how, how can I protect myself? Well, you can use conditional access to shorten the lifetime of those tokens. Go to security, conditional access, create a policy called session persistence, enable it for all the users, all the cloud apps, Select two controls right here, sign in frequency and persistence. One hour is what I've set for this test, uh, just to be able to demonstrate. And I'm gonna scope it just to my user for this one. So essentially it's the session persistence, which should be set to never, uh, which doesn't seem to work like I thought it would, um, but the timeline does. So our victim, let's snag one token, this time with one hour lifetime, uh, instead of the persistent for 90 days. We're gonna run through the same attack sequence. We're gonna put in our username, and this whole time, you should know, I'm approving this on my uh, approval app uh, from Authenticator push notifications, very much in the same way a lot of attacks, and recently the Cisco attack did. So I was getting my push app, saying yes, that means two-factor is implemented. And now I have a token that only has one hour lifetime. So I'm going to go copy that as the threat actor from the machine back here on the back end of the SSH uh, session. And we'll copy this. It's 1.54 p.m., which is when that session was born. We have one hour. So we're going to prep and come back at 2.05 uh, and test here, and then we're going to test again. Uh, so it's 2.05, and we're going to test by just going back to the attacker box, importing the token in the same way. It still remembers us, but we're going to edit the token and import with this new token that we have. Yep, and we'll see that we have that. And we'll go ahead and now just go to Outlook. Again, it should allow us in. It's 2.05 p.m., so the token's still valid, right? So we've tested that. 
Now, it's 3.07 p.m. is our next test window. So we're going to copy this again. You'll see down in the bottom right, it's 3.07 p.m. We're going to copy and paste. This should not work. We should not get in with this token once I import it. So we're going to import yet again with the copy and paste out of the cookie editor. These are all just easy, free, available tools. Uh, and then we're going to bring that in and import. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and reload. Now, you'll notice that we hopefully get a password box. We do. <laughs> all right. We are forced to log in yet again. Huzzah. It worked. Thank you so much for watching this. I hope you uh, saw how easy it is to steal your session and reuse it in a different context, in a different browser, in the safety of my own home. Um, and, and what that means to the end user didn't see anything. And what I can do with that is, is massive. So what did we learn today? Well, one, these are easy to use, easy to access tools. They work quite functionally. Even my uh, pretty low level capabilities get it done. And they're easy to deliver. But what did we learn about protecting ourselves? Well, conditional access and systems like reducing session lifetimes and persistence is a great start. Like many different systems allow for things like this. Microsoft conditional access happens to be the one that I love and use. Um, but what are the next things now that we've st started to put in some kind of session lifetime? Well, if you put in a one hour or a 10 minute or a five minute uh, type interval, you would drive your people crazy. Uh, and so you have to meter that and try to make decisions based on, you know, potentially setting more restrictive sign-in times for you know, administrators or privileged users or risky users or people that travel frequently or things like that. And that might be the best start, but what could you do later? Well, there's really great avenues along risk-based, um, continuous evaluation, where it's looking at that on a more frequent basis. And most importantly, Azure AD joined uh, requirements, right? So now not only would I have no ability to be that session in the middle now, that would go away completely, um, but it would require you to be Azure Active Directory joined, right? And when that session tries to proxy your traffic over to Microsoft, it says, wait, no, th this isn't AADJ. The device that's consuming this is not Azure Active Directory joined, and it would just deny it there. So it's a great defense mechanism. But for now, a great start, if you're not able to do that, would be to start with just setting a much, much lower time than 90 days, which is the default on that token, which means that if I'm an initial access broker, I can take that and for the next 90 days have marketability for someone to get in. And if they have admin rights, they can create an enterprise app, they can give themselves footholds, and they can do a lot more. So let's take it from 90 days to something more like seven days or four or one. Uh, you know, I think Dom likes to do one calendar day. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you. Please subscribe. Help me grow my channel. Thanks. And big shout out to Kuba Gretzky for getting me on the right track for the new parsed information. Kudos, amazing product you've built. I love to use it as an educator and I just wanted to say thank you.